Hello, my name is Emily Bassett and I am a clinical marketing specialist with Electa. Today we're going to look at how to set up limits for the critical structure avoidance feature. You can find more information about the general workflow for this functionality on a previous video. In essence, CSA has been designed to help manage daily anatomical changes or baseline shifts which may move the high dose region closer to the critical structure. Parameters can be set in XVI to streamline the workflow if this scenario arises, but what needs to be considered when setting these parameters? There are two areas to be defined. The first, what happens if your anatomy has changed and your tumour is now closer to your critical structure? How do you define this limit? Second, would your clinical team accept a small compromise to the tumour? If yes, a small tolerance may be defined at the time of planning. If no, due to a very small PTV margin, the limit would be zero. Critical structure avoidance can be helpful in cases where a critical structure is close to the high dose region. In these cases, the patient's outcome could be impacted if the critical structure received a higher dose than was planned. In Monaco, individual isodose lines can be converted into structures and exported with all other selected structures into XVI. Isodose structures in XVI can be a quick visual check to determine if the critical structure is closer to the high dose region than during planning. However, we can also use our Monaco plan to determine our CSA limits in a similar way, and this does the work for you. The measuring tool can be used to measure the distance between the critical structure and isodose structure, or the PTV, in all axes. This will be done in collaboration with the physician who knows the history of the patient. In this example, whilst the spinal cord is not in close proximity to the tumour, the patient has had previous treatment and the physician wants to limit the dose to the spinal cord to 12 grey. We have therefore used the 12 grey isodose line to measure and determine the limits on our critical structure avoidance. Some customers may choose to define their limits by moving the isocentre towards the critical structure and re-optimising the plan to see the effects on the DVH of this change. Here we have overlaid the relevant section of the XVI software so you can see the limits entered originate from the treatment plan. The parameters have been inserted into the limits table for the clip box. The user will be alerted if these limits are breached. For example, if a mask or target moves towards the clip box or bony anatomy and exceeds the predefined limits. At the time of treatment, the XVI software will prioritise the soft tissue match as default and a slider bar can be used to try to find a compromise. If you have any questions regarding XVI or critical structure avoidance, please contact your local elector sales representative. Thank you for watching.